All right, uh, let's talk about thermal energy. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is not really directly from the book. Your book mentions thermal energy a little bit, but in sixth grade, we have to know a lot more about it than what your book says. So we are actually going to pause for from the book and then spend this week just looking at just thermal energy. So there is no book work this week, but there will be a thermal energy assignment that will be in Google Classroom. Uh, it is called a like thermal energy review or something like that. The answers must come from the video, not Google. I will know if you got your answer from Google. Thermal energy review, those answers are in the video. The questions are probably in order. The questions are worded very much like what the person actually says. Get your answers from the video. Okay. Thermal energy has a couple of rules. Um, first of all, all substances have thermal energy. End of discussion. You can't fight it. There is not a substance that doesn't have thermal energy. That is because all atoms are in some sort of motion, and that motion is what gives them their thermal energy. You cannot get an atom to sit still, and so every substance, whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas, it's in motion, and so it has thermal energy. Thermal energy is a total, not an average, a total of the movement of atoms in a substance. The higher that total, the more thermal energy it is. There are three different ways to give a substance a higher total, but we're going to get into that later. In theory, the only way to get an atom to sit perfectly still and therefore have zero thermal energy were to reach a temperature called absolute zero. At absolute zero, it would have zero movement. But for a very complicated reason, scientists believe that this is impossible. That doesn't mean they're not trying. They are. Um, people are winning awards for getting uh, the lowest possible temperature, but they really cannot get to absolute zero. So uh, to give you a sneak preview, uh, here's a screenshot. In 2017, um, they got the they set a record for how close to absolute zero they got. They got to within five trillionths um, of absolute zero, um, and that's about as uh, that's the new record. So if you want to win awards, um, uh, beat that. And then if you want to um, prove the impossible. Uh, then go ahead and uh, figure out a way to get a substance to absolute zero and then uh, reward Mr. Bogdan for uh, giving you the idea with uh, small tropical islands. All right. In science, word choice matters. And so we can talk about things being hot and we can talk about things being not as hot. But in science, there is no such thing as cold. Cold is not a thing, all right? Uh, you'll hear the word cold a lot. Um, that's because people are talking unscientifically. But in science class, we can no longer mention anything being cold. We can only talk about things having a lot of thermal energy or not a lot of thermal energy, high thermal energy and low thermal energy, but we can never say cold. Um, in the news, they will give you uh, bad examples. Um, here's a screenshot that uh, from um, that I took even just this morning, and it talks about um, a cold front moving in, and so temperatures are going to drop. And so we can see uh, 56 degrees, 41, 35. So it looks like, according to the news, that cold is moving into the area. What is actually happening is that heat is leaving the area. So cold, there is no such thing as cold. Um, I think on your uh, quiz or your practice quiz this week, there's going to be questions that mentioned cold energy. Cold energy moves in. That's not a thing. Don't pick an answer that mentions cold energy. All right. So the reason why temperatures drop is because heat leaves not cold enters all right you live in only one of three countries that uses fahrenheit 
uh, when we talk about it being 56 degrees outside. In fact, if we go back to here, these are all in Fahrenheit. If they were in Celsius, especially here, you'd be dead. So you live in only one of three countries that uses Fahrenheit. Uh, scientists most often um, use Celsius and the other 200 something countries all use Celsius. For thermal energy, we're going to be talking about Kelvin because Kelvin was the guy who kind of came up with the idea of absolute zero. Uh, so he based his temperature scale on um, the, the, the lowest amount of movement a substance could have, which would be zero. So um, this, this kind of gives you uh, a good idea of the equivalency of uh, the three scales. So here, this is the same temperature, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, 373 degrees, uh, actually, ooh, that's a, that was a mistake, 373 Kelvins. In Kelvin, we never say the word degrees. So water is going to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the same thing as 100 degrees Celsius, which is the same thing as 373 Kelvins. Water freezes um, at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So zero Celsius and 32 degrees Fahrenheit are the same uh same temperature, um, just measured on uh, different scales. And uh, water is going to freeze at 273 Kelvin. All right. So it looks like the, the translation from Celsius to Kelvins is to add 273. All right. So uh, that seems to be consistent. Absolute zero, which is the very bottom of uh, thermal energy, would be zero Kelvins. The equivalent in Celsius is negative 273 degrees Celsius, which is the, the same thing as negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. All right, so here's a science joke for you. On the Fahrenheit scale, uh, 0 to 100 means it's really, they should replace the word cold with not hot. Really not hot outside to really hot outside. Uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit, that happens a, uh, a few times a year here in uh, Cincinnati. Um, it's really not hot when it's zero degrees outside. And we've had 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, days in Cincinnati, and it definitely is really hot outside. Zero to 100 on Celsius is a very different story. Um, zero is fairly not hot outside. And 100 degrees Celsius, if you remember, is the temperature which water boils. So if it was 100 degrees Celsius outside and you went outside, your blood would literally begin to boil because your blood is mostly water. On Kelvin, you're, de you're dead no matter what. Uh, zero Kelvin and 100 Kelvin, you're both just super dead. <laughs> All right. Just like absolute zero, there is a theoretical absolute hot, the highest possible temperature a substance can be. Uh, on this week's weekly guide, I've got this link right here, the full range of possible temperatures. You may have to download it and then start zooming in to read it. Uh, but um, And the, it's a kind of arranged in columns, so you have to look at what the column headings are at the very top of the pictograph. But uh, it's kind of interesting reading. Uh, you can kind of see different temperatures that scientists have um, gotten to. All right, on to this week's quiz material. The three factors of thermal energy are temperature, type of substance, and amount of substance. On all of your questions, two out of the three are going to be the same. Uh, they will use the word identical, which means that they're the same. All right. So uh, on all of your questions, one of these is going to be different. And as a general rule, for mo most of the time, whichever one has more of something, whether it's more temperature uh, or more m mass, then that is what's going to give us uh, more thermal energy. All right. So if the type and amount of substance is the same, so if you have the same substance and the same amount of that substance, two identical, there's that word, uh, substances with different temperatures will have different amounts of thermal energy. 
higher temperature um, will result in a higher total movement of molecules. And remember, the more movement you have, the more thermal energy you have. So at absolute zero, uh, there on the left, you can see there is no movement. Not really possible as far as we know, but hey, it's there, it's theory. In the middle, you can see a little bit of temperature means a little bit of movement. And on the right, higher temperature, more movement, and so it has more thermal energy. So more movement, more thermal energy. Okay, so here's a sample problem. Two out of the three things are the same. So we have 500 grams on the left, 500 grams on the right. So the amount is the same. Gold on the left, gold on the right. So I have two identical blocks of gold. All right, so that means that this, what they're made out of is the same and how much of it uh, um, I have is the same. They're both 500 grams. But the one on the left, uh, as you can see, is 50 degrees Celsius. And the one on the right is 60 degrees Celsius. So two identical blocks of gold at different temperatures. The one on the right is going to have more movement of its atoms and so therefore more thermal energy. The second factor is what it's made out of. Um, in, in these problems, the temperature is going to be the same and the amount is going to be the same, but the substances will be different. And therefore, they're going to have different amounts of thermal energy. And that's because every substance has its own unique melting freezing point and vaporization condensation point. And that's going to give the substances different amounts of movements. So at the same temperature, uh, we'll say in this example, 30 degrees, two substances are um, at different distances from their uh, change of point, state point. So at 30 degrees, the one at gold on the left is going to be a solid, not a lot of movement. At the same temperature on the right is water, and it's a, at 30 degrees, that's a liquid, which has a lot more movement. So because gold and water have different melting freezing points, they are going to have uh, different amounts of movement. So here's uh, 500 grams of gold, 500 grams of water. So the amounts are the same, 500 grams and 500 grams. And as I can see on the second line of each one, they're both at 50 degrees. But because one's a solid and one's a liquid, the liquid is going to have more movement. It's going to have more thermal energy. The third factor is how much of it you've got. So in these problems, the temperature is going to be the same and the substance that you have is going to be the same, but they're going to be a different um, amounts. So more atoms is going to give more movement and therefore more thermal energy. So because thermal energy is a total, more mass means um, uh, more, uh, more movement. So they're both... Uh, in this diagram, I've got some water here, and here I've got four times the amount of water. They're the same substance. They are going to be at the same temperature, so we'll say 50 degrees. At 50 degrees, these are going to be moving. Here, I'm going to have four times the total amount of movement, and so therefore, those on the right, I'm going to have more thermal energy. And the, another example of this is going to be 100 grams of gold on the left and 500 grams of gold on the right. Uh, that we're going to have, we're going to have, they're both at 50 degrees. This one's going to have five times the total amount of movement because it's got five times the mass. Okay, all of your all of your problems are going to have only one thing being different. But the students always ask me. What if two or three things are changed? And in real life, that's what does happen. So here's a sample problem. Which of these has more thermal energy? A 75 gram block of silver at 87 degrees Celsius or a 120 gram instead of 75 block of gold instead of silver and at 65 degrees instead of 87 Celsius? Well, in this situation, all three variables are different. 75 and 67, I'm sorry, 75 and 120, 87 and 65, 
um, and silver and gold. Everything about this is different. And this is a real life example. At this point, you have to do a lot of very uh, complicated calculations using a lot of complex formulas. Luckily for you, you are in sixth grade and you are not going to be asked these kinds of questions. All right. Thermal energy. Always, always, always. Like end of discussion. It's a law. Always moves from high high uh, temperature areas to low temperature areas. There's no way of fighting it. There's no way of reversing it. You can't make it not behave this way. If you can get thermal energy to reverse direction, you will become rich, famous, and you will buy Mr. Bogdan Tropical Islands. But for now, it's impossible. So just accept it as a rule. In all of your uh, quiz questions this week, always select the answer that has temperature going from the high area to the low area. Um, it's going to do this until both substances have the same temperature, and this is called the law of thermodynamics. So if I put, say, a piece of cold butter on a ear of hot corn, fresh off the grill or out of the oven, however you cook your corn, the corn has more thermal energy uh, than the butter because it's at a higher temperature. And so the thermal energy is going to move from the corn to the butter. And therefore, the temperature of the corn will go down. The temperature of the butter will go up. All right. You have a gizmo that you've been working on. You've got a thermal energy uh, review to work on. That's in Google Classroom. And remember that your answers must come from the video. So uh, you should now get to work. Remember that there is no book work this week. You just have your gizmo and your thermal energy review, both of which are in Google Classroom. You've got the five questions uh, from this assignment, and you'll also uh, uh, have the quiz this week and the practice quiz will be there. So you've got plenty of stuff to keep you occupied this week. Go get them.